You're listening to the 40 Fit Radio Podcast, dedicated to the 40-plus community. Join us as we discuss the truth about fitness and health using science, reason, and the experiences of our host and content experts. Welcome to the 40 Fit Nation. Dude, not. <laughs> She's saying you I eat burp breakfast on in the, the morning. Radio, you eat, you on must the eat 40 breakfast. Fit radio. Welcome no, no, back no. to the 40 Fit Radio I can tell podcast. You and go. welcome uh. back to the 40 Fit Nation. And it has already started. We haven't are we are we live? We are live. We are live and live <laughs> from Keller, of, Texas. You know what talking. Um I don't want to use you know, we try to Okay, on our podcast, I'm just gonna say something. I know my podcast is kind of it's kind of candy clean. I mean, I don't I, we don't have a lot of profanity on our podcast because some people who are over the age of 40 might be driving along in their car yeah. with their kids. And Trent and I have said that we want to have a podcast that they can listen to and not feel like they have to bleep, bleep it off, you know. Yeah. Um, so we're generally pretty clean on our podcast. But prior to starting the intro to this podcast, there was already a lot of she talking already. A lot of that going on. Yeah, let's be clear here. We have a There's guest. plenty of profanity here at 40 Fit Radio yes. Studios. Yes, it just happens off the air. Yes, yeah. and and we have a guest in the studio today, and it's going to be hard. We may have to, we may have to enact what we would call a gag order. A gag order. Do you know what a gag order is? Uh, yes. Yes, it's when you yeah. order a gag. Right. So we might have to yeah. do that with this particular I, guest. I also have, as producer of yes. this podcast, I have the power of the bleep. Yes. Um, Not I only the bleep, bleep yeah. but the bleep, but the entire, like we can make, like when someone wants to say something, we let them say it. And then afterwards, they just disappear. That's right. Yeah. Because we just take that the video right out. Or just, the, the just, audio right just out. Just do a little snip. It's just, zip, it's gone. That's right. So, welcome back to the 40 Fit Radio, and welcome back to the 40 Fit Nation. And today we have a guest, Coach Trent and I have a guest, and it is JoJo Brenton. And JoJo is a CrossFit coach. She's also a lifelong athlete, and she got a really cool athletic background that we like. To, I'd like to talk about. Um, she's English uh, hor- riding, horse riding, competition, English riding. Um, uh, she's been a soccer athlete. Um, also a great CrossFitter. We're going to talk a little bit about that. We're going to talk about her injury history. We're going to talk about what it's like to stay fit and healthy over the age of 40. She just very gently over the age of 40, actually right below the age of 50. I think she just had a birthday recently. So welcome to the 40 Fit Radio podcast, Jojo. Thank you. So it's, it's glad to have her today. And um, we've been wanting to do this for a while because Jojo kind of represents uh, what we would I think what, what Trent and I and, and some other people that are in our circle would like to see with over 40 females get involved with, and that is strength training. And then at the same time, do a little bit of conditioning, get that balanced approach towards health and fitness. We're going to talk a little bit about that balance today and how hard that is too sometimes. So welcome to the podcast and tell us a little bit about yourself. Let's start with you were born in the womb. Wow. Um, yeah. <laughs> so... 49 years ago. Uh, So no, born and raised in Fort Worth. And I grew up in a family, youngest of six, and everyone was very athletic and active. So I just followed suit. I had two older sisters that were horse, horse women. And so I grew I and they were, um, you know, 12 to 17 years older than me. So I always remember being on a horse and then had um, played soccer from where I was little, played through high school, and then went to college and didn't work out much, and then came back from college and started working out, got married, had kids, and have just through all those years continued working out or training or exercising. So really the only time I didn't were, there, were those four years in college, undergraduate school. I would, yeah. didn't do much. but So you didn't, you didn't compete or do anything, any sports? In college, yeah. not in college, no. Beer so, no, Party. no. I was a serious. I graduated with honors. Thank you very much. That's right. yeah. <laughs> People, my kids not listen to this. <laughs> so, so JoJo okay, lives yeah. in a man's world. It's a man's world. Mm-hmm. I think that's a song. But she, um, she definitely lives in a man's world. She has three boys, three amazing young men. Uh, so you got Alex at the top. 
And then there's Mikey. Mm-hmm. And then there is, oh, the last one is um, uh, Eli. Mm-hmm. Eli. So Alec is, uh, t- go through it. Okay, Alec will be a sophomore at Tech, and he just a state athlete. I mean, state yeah. awarded, just outstanding uh, football player, kicker, but um, wanted to go to Tech to study and uh, – Live the fraternity life. And then Mikey is just graduated. He's starting baseball at Hill College in August. Uh, amazing, athlete. amazing yeah. all around. Lots, lots of, lots of talents. And then Eli will be a freshman yeah. in high school. And he's pretty much focusing on football. Yeah. And they're all studs. They're, they're all stud athletes. Good Athletic athletes. family. Yeah. Mom's involved. Dad's involved. They go to everything. Try to. Um, Try yeah. To. Good parents. And you're a teacher. I'm a fourth grade teacher, mm-hmm. okay. and I've, uh, stay, I was fortunate enough to stay home for 10 years, so taught 13, stayed home 10, and have just been back and finished my fourth year. But during that time, I guess I attribute those 10 years off to helping me stay active and stay in shape and pursue some interests like CrossFit and lifting yeah. that I may not have been able to if I had had to work full time all those years when the kids are little. Right. Sure. Right. Sure. So now it's uh, summer vacation, summer vacation. Yeah. And I've already taken one trip and have lots of stuff going she on. She went this to summer. Aruba. No, that was in April. Oh, that was okay. in April. Yeah, so, so where did you yeah, go? I'm recently? sorry. Yeah. We, we were talking about trip. this before. I think she's taken like nine beach no. trips in the last two weeks. No, I've, no, that's <laughs> a life. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe four in 12 months, yeah. but that's not normal. Yeah, yeah. Not normal. Yeah, she said it's because all her kids are graduating. So the kids', <laughs> the kids family's all going like a graduate to Mexico trip yes. for yeah, a week. Yeah. I think we so, do it for the parents yeah, more so right, than the kids right. now is what like, I'm figuring out. 18 like, years. Yes. And oh, no, now yeah. we get to pay for college. Yeah, yeah. Or it's oh. our last hurrah with right, yeah. right. friends and stuff. Yeah. So, okay, so you, you, were, you were athletic growing up. Mm-hmm. Laid off in college mm-hmm. and got back into it. What did you do mm-hmm. when you first got back into exercising? Working when I out? first got back into exercising, I had was uh, going to be in a wedding. Leg and leotards. Well, no, oh, sorry. this was sorry, I graduated. I, thought it was like in the 80s. I graduated college in ninety two. Okay. So after that, I had Doc a, Martens. A girlfriend plaid. was close, close. My closest girlfriend was getting married, and I remember I just started back teaching, and I was looking at myself. I'm like, this isn't really good. So I started. My sister, Gigi, had started working at a YMCA, working out there. And so I started joining her, and that's – I was doing the classes at the YMCA. Okay, yeah, like aerobics classes? <laughs> oh, yeah. Or, yeah, yeah. It's fun yeah. to stay at the or in step, yes. No, I was, I was at a YMCA for a long time. <laughs> okay, yeah. And did you pick up any weights during that time? Well, it was not safe to pick up anything over five pounds. I was okay. told yeah. that. You know, I, have, I, I really, Why really that? do remember – well, this was at a YMCA in Bedford. And we were doing weights, and I, I would tend to want to get a little heavier weight just because. Yeah, why not? It's just right? me. And, Isn't that the point was, of weights? I was, I was like told I could. It was not safe for me to do over five pounds in this workout. So I, I, I did listen to her, but I don't think I went back to that class. Yeah, yeah. And so when now was this before you started having children or after? Oh, it was. I started at a YMCA before, and I worked at an YMCA through till I had all three kids. I just okay. went to a different YMCA. Gotcha. And did you mm-hmm. train through pregnancy? Absolutely. Too? All right. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Yep. All right. So, at what point then did you? At this point, we we would safely say on our show. We would consider that exercising. I right? exercised yeah. very well. So doing and, classes. And she knows what that means. I right. know what that so, means. Exactly. Yes. We're going to yeah. talk about that a little yeah. bit more here in a second. But um, uh, at what point did you first discover training? Like in a more organized sense where you're maybe well, going after a specific mm-hmm. goal? I would have to say CrossFit, though. What I know now and what I understand is training is different. Sure. But when I was introduced to CrossFit about seven and a half years ago, that was the first time that I started actually recording things and looking at improvements and those type of things that really, I would believe, have some training. But yeah. at this point, yeah. you know, I'm not a novice CrossFitter anymore. Right, and right. It's 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 not going to benefit me to just randomly go in and do exercises sure. at this well, point. Well, and I think w- one one thing that's important to point out here is that if you okay, if you're a CrossFitter out there, JoJo still coaches CrossFit in the local gym. Um, she's got a great community, great group of people. The gym owners fantastic. It's a good community, um, but 
when you think about CrossFit, it's it's not. We talked about this in the endurance uh, podcast that we did. It's not totally random, right? It's not randomization without some sense of thought. And so, one of the things that we were that we taught our membership when we owned our CrossFit gym, and JoJo teaches her members, and and she's been taught this too, is that if you're doing certain what we call, um, uh, they're they're kind of the the HQ metcons. They're the they're the foundational metcons. You got everything from, and metcons are metabolic conditioning workouts. We talk about that. Uh, it might be the Helen workout, or they're all the girls. We call them because their girls' names Angie, Helen. Um, Nancy, they keep adding them too. Um, Fran, yeah. Fran, yeah. Fran yeah. is another one. So you've got this this set parameters in a workout, and you could measure from from time you did it to time you did it to time you did it. You could see if your times were improving, and or if your your um, your number of rounds were improving. Whatever the metric was that you were using for measuring it, you could see if you were improving over time. And here's what happens for about the first twelve to eighteen months. Everyone improves. You better be you if yeah. you are consistently coming. Right, you, everyone's you gonna are improve. going to improve in everything. Right, and so everyone yeah. improves, and then at some point you kind of get to this point to where it's just like the novice effect for for um, lifting. At some point, it's that that stimulus. That stressor in a workout is just not great enough to make you better at that one workout. Right. So you can no longer, because let's just call that exercising for a while. It's not, you're, you're actually competing to exercise, you're exercised to competing. It's, you, you haven't really started training yet because there's no progressive, there's no periodization or progressive loading over time. Even though the way CrossFit HQ teaches it is that it really should be done that way. Right. It right. just very seldomly gets implemented that way in the gym. Yeah. So yeah. there is a model. Yes. That's to it. Yeah. yeah. And it's hard, yeah. it's hard to teach that and to apply that. Some gyms that have a very good, what we call on ramping or startup system will do that. But what happens and what, what Jojo probably experienced is that she got stronger because you do some Absolutely. barbell lifts. Yeah. You Absolutely. do and you do them frequent enough that anyone who is unconditioned and not strong is going to get stronger at some point though they're they're going to hit a wall right right because the the frequency of training and the style of training is not consistent enough and the barbell training is not consistent enough that you don't take advantage of a true scientific um, progressive model over right, time. Right, exactly. Um, but you do exactly. get stronger, you get more endurance. And I see athletes all the time continue to improve on some lifts. Yes, yes. But I don't, I don't know overall how many years you can do that and at what age. I'm 49. What I could right. do at 43 and all the things that have happened in those years right. from 42, I've, I've had some injuries. So right. um, I haven't seen that always in yeah. the last few years. So I want to go back to um, when you discovered CrossFit. Mm -hmm. What was how did that feel to go from a you know in a purely exercised random aerobics class type environment like you're doing at YMCA to a little bit more structured program where you're doing barbells? Was it easy to uh, get into barbells? Was that kind of intimidating at first? Or? Oh no, I. I wasn't intimidated at all. I just wasn't sold really fast on any on it. It it was one of those I'm going to do this for I'm going to give it three months and then see and then it became six Get months hooked. and yeah, then yeah. but it was definitely not. Some people talk about oh they walked in one time they did one workout and they were hooked. I I was a little bit skeptical. It was strange for me to go in and do a 15 minute workout and then leave. Right. But over time I, I slowly learned and I would read and I was reading articles and following things and looking at the community. And then I just started, it just, it just made more sense than anything else I was doing. So, yeah. right. Right. Yeah. And I think it's important to point out here too, like we were saying earlier that, that a lot of people that, that get into that model, like we said, everyone's going to get stronger. In general, everyone's going to get better at processing energy. Their endurance is going to get better. Their ability to handle metcons, their power, and all those things, they're, they're going to improve. What we find, though, and what JoJo was speaking of earlier, is that when you get a little bit more advanced as a, let's use the term athlete here, because in CrossFit, we use that term athlete a lot. We don't use the term lifter because they're, they're more than lifting. They're athletes for CrossFit, the sport of CrossFit. Um, Air quotes. And so, but at some point, um, 
anyone who's a good CrossFitter starts to compartmentalize their training. So if you look at the games athletes, they have a lifting cycle. Boom. It's classical bodybuilding, barbell, tra- and then barbell training. They have a weightlifting cycle. And then they have a conditioning cycle and a skill and mobility cycle. And they put all these cycles together in their training model in micro and macro cycles to gear them up for the next major competition that they're getting ready for. So now they have begun, begun to destruct the whole idea that it's of, of randomness and constantly varied high intensity functional movement is not the only way they train anymore. They don't CrossFit to get better at CrossFitting. They do all these other stuff, and then they do the CrossFit workouts in the midst of that to train metabolically, to train skill work, to train transitions, how quickly they can transition between movements. They work on their skill, and they learn to not compete in their daily training anymore. They compete when they're ready to compete. You know what I mean? And every now and then they'll do test workouts and they'll do a workout that's like a primer to see, okay, what is your time really like on a Fran now? Or or their coach will write out a workout and they'll say, okay, I want you to do this, this, and this. And their coach will have in their mind, I've done this with JoJo before because I've coached her for several years. Our coach would have in their mind, okay, I think they'll get three and a half to four rounds on this. And so it's a test workout. And then they'll give it to the athlete and they'll tell them, go all out on this. This is like a a competitive workout. Go all out on this workout and see what happens. And then they'll see what happens with the, with the athlete and see, do they crater? Did they do really well? What happened? What were the results? And then they'll tweak training based on that. So most competitive CrossFitters today have a coach and they have a coach in different compartments, different areas of their training. So it, it, it's the average member that's using CrossFit that's in a gym doesn't have a coach other than their CrossFit coach. And, um, and they just kind of, they just do what's on the board that day. Right. And that's, that's what we sell. That's what we sold when we were in those gyms is the idea of constantly varied high intensity functional movement. And so the average person that comes in, they don't know if it's training. They, they might say, I'm going to go train, but really since they don't know what's going to be on the board and how it compared to yesterday's workout, they are relying on that coach to, to program something that's methodical enough that actually is a stressor in a way that scientifically adapts their body to the improvements that they need. But I don't think it really works that way at some point. At some point, the person really kind of meets a, a wall where the training is kind of so random at times that, that they might be needing more strength training and they're getting more conditioning work. Or they might be needing more conditioning work and they're getting strength training because it's programming for the masses. And then you have to hire a coach if you want something more specific. And that's, that's uh, the way JoJo and I met was I, I met her in a physical therapy clinic, uh, treating her for, for a knee uh, surgery that she had. But the way she came to me was through her, uh, another coach who's a CrossFitter in the area who recommended me because we treated his shoulder. And so she came to me as a, as a PT, both myself and, and Matt Taylor, I believe, mm-hmm. as PTs who were CrossFitters yeah. and could, could speak her language yes. and could understand what her needs yep. were yep. as a patient. So... Yeah. So, so tell us about that. How did, um, so it was a knee injury. Did you sustain it, uh, while training or doing something Originally, else? Originally I, I was playing indoor soccer, tore my ACL okay. 41, I guess maybe 41, 42. I, sorry, I have, it, have some memories. I've stored away. <laughs> and so I'd had this injury. Early onset, too, or, too, yes, many, too many headers. Called selective. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yes. Yes. So I had torn the ACL playing indoor soccer. Okay. Yeah. Very Years common injury prior, in soccer. Prior. Yeah. yeah. Very, very common, especially for a female, especially someone that's played soccer for years. So I had done therapy somewhere else. So after that, I started CrossFit. So probably it was about a year and a half or maybe a little more that I started CrossFit. Okay. I was, yeah. Everything was going on fine. A couple of times I was having some trouble with my knee and it was bothering me. But I attribute it to a lot of pounding and some different things, learning double unders or jumping up on the bar, you know, just different Box things. Jumps, yeah, running. that I, things yeah. I, I was not doing in any kind of exercise program. And then I so everything was going around fine. And I had been training. I was really excited. I was in the middle of the open. This was the open I was gonna you know I really was trying to get it for me at the time it was getting in the top 200 and I'd done a couple workouts I was sitting I was in a good 
good place for me. And yeah, she good I the... was snow skiing and I tore my, I retore the mm. ACL. Yeah. And then that was when, so I had, I tore what I had had repaired. And then that's when I met Darren. Okay. So you, so it's been you, four years. So you tore it playing soccer and then had a surgical repair and then you, you re injured it. I had a skiing. surgical repair. I retore it skiing. Yeah, okay. And then six months after the repair, the second ACL surgery, I found out that it was a, biological failure um or the graft your graft didn't, didn't survive. my graft didn't okay, survive yeah. so it so was, they're like nah let's just get rid of that ACL. yeah i was one of those yo well it happens in about one percent of the cases and i didn't know i was so lucky mm, gotcha so <laughs> but so I okay, so, have an ACL. so it's torn and and so so when i when i when we started doing physical therapy with her started working physical therapy, we, I told her then, I said, you know, you don't have an ACL, your knee just, it won't, it, it won't tolerate the kind of pounding, the change in directions, the, the quick movements, the jumping up and down on it, the running and all that stuff. I said that your number one goal is to get crazy strong, get strong in the leg and protect the remaining joint and articular cartilage the best you can and the best way to do that is to get really strong and do a weightlifting program and avoid some of those unpredictable movements that are associated with so much crossfitting. Uh, not that she couldn't crossfit. So that's what we did. We worked with her in the PT clinic and then we started some strength training. And then and I, yeah, I went into starting strength and I did a linear progression. And yep. then, of course, there's always little things that happen back and forth and then yep. have continued doing that. No surgery. No surgery will help me at this point. Four years out, I've I'm I won't I won't do another. If it's a surgery, it'll be a knee replacement. Yeah, yeah. By this yeah. time, so yeah. Th at this point, you've, mm -hmm. you've had some cartilage wear. Uh, yeah, and, and that yeah. was it. Was um, I have arthritis, and I was told that the first time I had the ACL done at forty one, forty two. So I knew that was happening, and with all the surgeries and different things, it's it's the the arthritis is bad, and yeah. the. Yep. Tissues, I mean, basically her knee's junked. I mean, it is junk. Yeah. Her knee does not have any cartilage left in it. So what we're trying to do now is, and she's seen a surgeon that we know, um, and um, she's had a couple of procedures done just to just to kind of quieten down the inflammatory, you know, the pain and the inflammation in the joint. So what we've been doing is just ramping her back up with some volume carefully. Um, and then also letting her do some conditioning, uh, getting rid of anything that's pounding to the joint and mostly focusing on when we're doing lower extremity work for conditioning, we might be doing the rower or the echo rogue bike or, um, doing kettlebell swings. Um, she tolerates surprisingly well. Um, she tolerates squatting right now really well. She tolerates deadlifts. Well, she can press, she can bench, she does chin, she does push ups, She does kettlebell swings. We do weighted lunges. Um, uh, we do some step ups. And so what we're doing is just kind of rebalancing her program and focusing on, and this is a conversation we've had, um, for her with her knee history. Um, and she got a little bit of back issue every now and then a little bit of back and hip issue every now and then. And it's when, it, when we use the term arthritis, we think of old people. Arthritis is two words. Arth in Latin means joint. Itis means inflammation. It's just inflammation of any joint. A younger person can have arthritis. And especially if it becomes repetitive, it's just more chronic arthritis. And so what we have to do is she and I have had this conversation because we're wired very similarly, kind of like you are too in some ways, Trent. And that is this. I could be crazy super strong right now. I think I could be a 600-pound deadlifter and a 500-pound squatter. All right? My deadlift right now is 515 was, my squat's 451. But at what cost? Right. At what cost? Right. When my knees are already hurting a little bit or my back's already a little tweaked, at those levels of training, the question is, if my form is pretty good and my training's pretty solid, is it really worth that much more to me to get to that level? Or would I like to be reasonably strong for the rest of my life? And to be able to squat down and pick up my grandkids. Right. Yeah. yeah you hop this on the tractor at the you know yeah. at the end of a, a long week of work. That's right. And, yeah. This exactly. is one of the things we've talked about in our podcast that that with the forty fit nation, and that is being too fit might make you unhealthy too. I well, know that people have it, a hard time with that. What's the yeah yeah where the, you start not being fit anymore and you're actually 
yeah. unhealthy yeah. because you're hurting or you're injured or you have. So what I what happens to me is I just I think as a lifetime competitor with horses and soccer, and then I was introduced to CrossFit, and I really honestly did not think I was. I mean, I know I've always been competitive, but I I yeah you went to the fittest games. Yeah, I yep. definitely and did make the podium, but that yep. was a few years ago. Yeah, so I know. Was, You're a good athlete. But, but I li- I like the challenge. I I like to do better than other people, but I will sacrifice because in the moment I'm going, I'm working, everything's fine, and then I'll pay for it. Yeah. Um. I so I would say sometimes I wish I had maybe started CrossFit maybe when I was thirty. And I'd have a little more longevity, yeah. but but yeah. it, it's, it right. doesn't matter. It's fine. But and, and at the end of the day, I could go well, through all that. I get what do I win? A, a, a med ball, yeah. Yeah. a um, a Lululemon coupon. Well, yeah. no, I never. <laughs> I would like that. I never got those. <laughs> but you know, several things. I mean, yeah. I have a cool cooler, and I mean, all that is really fun. But of course, just winning anything, just that placing is huge. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so I, was, I get fed on that. I, I used to always tell our, our folks in our gym, our members in our gym that wanted to go do a competition. I said, I'm great with that. I said, but you know, my real emphasis to you is to have a balanced, healthy, fit lifestyle. That's my, has always been my real emphasis, even though I was a competitor too. And I would go and I would crush myself so I could stand on the podium and get hot, sweaty, and tired in some rat hole gym somewhere and win a bag full of coupons, a protein shaker bottle, and a t-shirt. Right. For what? I mean, I mean, it just. It and, is fun, though. It's it fun. Is fun. It's it, it is, is like a hobby. Yeah, so in that regard, for it's what? A but hobby. It's a hobby <laughs> that most people life, don't life want. Study. That when you're in the middle, you're like, why am I doing this? <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> and then you still keep doing it. It's it's really insane. Well, it's addictive. I mean, yeah. exercise in this manner, yeah. high intensity training and competition is very very addictive sure sure it, what it well, does to you chemically and and you know it, crossfit is well known for having a great community you know yeah. most yep. gyms have yep. fantastic yep. community there's yep. kind of like that you know brother in arms sister in arms kind yeah. of suffering yeah. yes. mutual suffering yes. yeah. uh, thing going yeah. on yeah and um it, you know, was that hard to uh to kind of reconcile the fact that i love this community versus uh, i just can't operate yeah. the level i mm-hmm. want to mm-hmm. Absolutely kind of no, training. because I still I still have the problem today. I I will look at something and want to do it, and it's 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 um, I don't say a Sometimes dying to does. self, but I I still will go and do I still will do CrossFit workouts. I'm sure, still will yeah. go in and do, and I'm just learning to modify a lot more than I used to, or shorten something, or uh, really you know people used to always joke about oh you someone's a cherry picker. They're only going to do the workouts they want. Well. I cherry pick, but it is because I have to. I'm not going to do a, a workout that involves running a mile right now. That's just yeah, not right, going to benefit. Right. So I don't pick that workout. Yeah, but so. that's a different. That's a different type of. Um, if someone's cherry picking something because they want to avoid something because it's hard, yeah. or because they don't like it, well, they, they need to learn. Right, they need to learn to do that. Um, but we're what we're doing is we've we've taught you and you've taught yourself how to modify your training. Because we've taken her from mindset of exercise to a mindset of training to where the inputs need to match whatever the desired outputs are. And I think that's the difference here is that if she wants to maintain a relatively high level of fitness and keep the body habitus the way her body looks and the muscle mass that she likes to carry. So by the way, so I just got to throw this in. So a year ago, last January, not this last January, but January prior, she competed at the USSF meet at a USSF meet. She, to tell you how strong this lady is. Okay. She, you were there. That's right. So yep. she squatted, um, for, uh, you see her, her highest squat was 270. Three, I think, or two seventy one. It was either two seventy three. Yep, it was it was in the two seventies, maybe two eighty. Yeah, it was two seventy something. Two seventy three point six, I think. Her deadlift was two eighty six. That's right. And yeah. her press was one twelve, I think. One twelve. I think or it one, was maybe one ten, but I've done, yeah. I did I did PR after that right. a couple of right. So so this is a I mean, she's not that big of a woman either. This is she's I'm not little. Cr- no, but this is crazy <laughs> strong too yeah. though. I mean, she's really strong though. So I think she would love to be a strength competitor. She would love to continue to do um, USSF, you know, uh, type events, but we got to get her knee at a point to where, so what we're doing right now is we've kind of retweaked her program 
to allow her to be able to, number one, have knee health, and then also still maintain her other lifts. So she's still bench pressing. She's still pressing. She's still doing chins. We're still doing lower body work. Um, we started doing some leg pressing too, and and uh, we bought, got a leg press for the gym. So we've had to modify things. So she's having to learn how to train versus just exercise. And, right. and it's and it's a constant. It's a it's a battle, but in a way, I still know that um the cost i pay some if, if i'm really focusing on strength so right now it's easy for me to do some other workouts and other things when i'm not just because i'm at i'm i'm ray she does uh, workouts and yes. she won't tell me yes <laughs> but she, says, she says well my wrist is really hurting so i wasn't able I was, to i the, yes because i did yes. handstand push-ups so i was like well i don't remember programming that no i just i don't like to practice things. busted and busted. then i'm in the i'm in a crossfit gym some so i like to play right so but i know when it gets serious i have to really focus on the strength training because i can't at at 49 it cannot be sore and not recovered and be able yeah. to go in if and keep raising those numbers me. up yeah. Yeah. right so right. right now like i know my bench press is getting heavy for me so i'm like okay you gotta be yeah but yeah. but i i do struggle with sure. it still well you know but i think you you bring up a good point and that's that you know there there is a you train. You've gone through novice progression. Mm-hmm. You're a, you're a very strong lady. Um, you know when it's time to dial it in. Um, you know how to do that. But you know when it's when you're when you're not training for a specific goal, it's okay to have a little bit of fun too, right? You, and you've just learned um, what you can and can't do when it comes I'm to see, um, yes, it's yeah. learning it and then uh, putting that in action and then putting it in action. Yeah, because right. yeah. I yeah. live in denial some days. <laughs> you know, and I, I think probably for most people, for most people. Um, they don't have your problem, right? They have the opposite problem. Like you, you're like you're one of the rare people that we have to, as coaches, kind of slow down a little bit. Yeah, we like, got to put a bit in our mouth yeah. and pull back on the like, reins. Yeah, like, whoa, whoa. It's different. It's like a lot love... of people have to put spurs on and we have to kick them <laughs> a little right. bit yeah. to get them moving we're, along. We're working that right. Yeah, crop. I mean that's a the horse, you know, you know, analogy. But yeah, exactly. Yeah, so she's that... the one that I would have to pull back, and then other lifters or other CrossFit athletes that I used to train, I would have to push forward a little right, bit. Right, right. Yeah, it's kind of come that on. That drive like, that fire. is not a problem with her. Yeah, exactly. So I'd say you know uh, like. When, when, you know, it all comes down to that's, that's a good problem to have, right? Um, I'd say your level of fitness and ability is, is still very high compared to um, other people your age. And um, even with, like you've shown, like even with a, a pretty substantial injury to your knee, uh, yeah, you're injuries, still very able. Yeah. And mm-hmm, I wanted to mm-hmm, talk about that mm-hmm, a little bit more. Mm-hmm. So what was it like um, when you first started doing starting strength and learning the starting strength style of squat? Um, how did that feel? on your knees. I didn't I didn't have any problem with it. It was fine. The only the problem I had is people would tell me how to squat and they okay, didn't yeah. understand why I was squatting the way I was because squatting. Because she was in a CrossFit gym. I, right. Okay. Yeah, we they would still squat do it. They still will do it to yeah. me like so, why so are to you looking down? But, explain that, right? Okay, so CrossFit yes, yes. uh, typically teaches a high bar type squat yes, where the knees will yeah, come forward yeah, more, yeah. the the back is much more vertical and starting strength we teach a low bar squat, which where the knees flex less, the mm-hmm. hips go back mm-hmm. further. We lean over more, so we use more hips, less knee. I was able to build up over time to where my squat was, which was pretty good always in CrossFit numbers, uh-huh. but even go higher and higher doing the low bar. It just is time. I think most people just don't want to work it out. I mean, it it's takes, boring months it's not sexy. and then, it's boring. And then yeah. something happens and you yeah. got a deload and but um i still i'm still learning all those things but yeah no no problem with the squatting and so darren were you working with her when you first started having her squat the low bar style were you working with maybe like a little bit more of a hips back position even knowing that that knee flexion might be an issue or yeah i just let we just use the model in the clinic, we started in the clinic, and we just used the model, and we started with air squats, rehab-wise, and then we did, I think we did goblet squats for a short period of time, maybe with a kettlebell or with a dumbbell, and then we added the bar, we added the 35-pound, uh, what we would call the female bar, women's bar, but it's 35-pound bar, um, and we just, we used the model, and the model allowed her to squat without pain. Um, in the right knee and she could lift she could deadlift without pain and then the upper body lifts for Jojo were easy she was relatively strong um, and I think what what we found what I found as her coach over time was basically this when I could predict exactly what she was going to do 
We kept everything kind of quiet. We kept her knee quiet and she just continued to get better and better and better. It was anything that was random that was out of the, out of the ordinary where her knee would blow up. And it usually involved things that were, that were more, um, not necessarily compressive, but unpredictable, like running, jumping, um, uh, you know, it would be things where she, wa- we weren't controlling necessarily the volume, the frequency or the intensity of the, or the type of movement when sure. that would occur, yeah. the knee would blow up. And or would, as one surgeon said, your yes. feet don't need to leave the ground. Yes, exactly. For <laughs> so, her, that yeah, didn't work that for is her. like yeah. jumping, right. running, anything. Right. Yeah, it's just right. don't I mean, let she your just feet didn't leave ha- the ground. She just not have any cartilage left in the knee. So where we are today is we are working, we are working our way back up. She had an acute flare up about uh, four months ago, five months ago, less than that. April. April. Okay. April. She had an acute flare up with the knee. Just the knee just blew up. And, um, and so she had it drained and, uh, they did a corticosteroid injection. And basically the surgeon that she went to said, uh, your knee's trashed. You need a knee replacement. I mean, you can't do stem cell injections on a knee that really just doesn't have any cartridge left. I mean, they looked at her knee basically and said, I can't believe you can function on this knee. Um, and so we've gradually worked her way back up. And she's functioning very well. And so the goal is, is to use a training model that just every, there's no surprises here. We just titrate load and increasing the intensity of the workouts over time. And we see what it can take. We know what the, what the long run is, but she and I have had lots of conversations and I've talked to myself about this too, because we know my back history and shoulder history and everything. Right. And that is this. You know, you can be crazy, super strong and amazingly fit right now, but not have it for very long. Or you can be reasonably strong and fitter than probably nine, nine, you can be in the top 90th or 95th percentile and you can look better than almost all those females too, because your natural genetics and working on your diet and nutrition, or you can really have very little. If you overdo it and then you're, then you're screwed, you know? And so we've, 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 and I think we have this conversation all the time with people on 40 fit. uh, Then that is that it's a balance. We've got to develop a balanced health and fitness lifestyle. Now for the person that wants to be a competitor, then I tell them all the time, all right, I can make you stronger and I can make you a better competitor from a coaching standpoint, but I might take something away from you and that's your health. Right. Right. Long term. And I think the other lesson and I'm here, fine with that, but just know you got to be a big boy. Exactly. Right. Yeah. You go, in, go in with eyes open. And I, I think the other lesson here is that you can, um, it, it, when you're when you're younger and you've got more recovery resources available, just because you're younger, right? Um, you can get away with doing things suboptimally, right? You, the margin for error is greater. The margin. I mean, for the margin error for error is better. I mean, yeah. you've got more margin for error. That's right. You yeah. can you can go and you know we've all heard the stories of the guy who gets into powerlifting and he just you know the training just looks like this max out every day. Yeah, at yeah. the gym and he and, crushes it. And you know what? Some of those yeah. guys when they're twenty five, yeah. they get pretty dang strong. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but when you're 55, that's not going to work. No. Right. So, um, or even 45 or 35, right? So that's the other lesson here is that um, as the margin closes, as you get older, it's more important to just be intelligent about the way you approach training, whatever your goals are, right? And right. maybe even do training versus exercise, really thinking about what you're doing and the impact. And then I always like to think of minimum effective dose, though I have a hard time with minimum. I want to go more, 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 but <laughs> maximum. and then deciding what is it I really want to live with. And I can probably attain a lot of things without yeah. extremes, but I still enjoy some things that probably aren't good for my knee. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, it's kind of interesting. And JoJo's like, like a lot of the people that are in our community that, that are kind of in our inner circle. Um, we're, we're all fitness geeks. I mean, she watches, she listens to our podcast. She's listened to all of our podcasts. She, she reads books, you know, we'll touch base on something with her training and she'll be in the middle of, of reading something that she read. She follows social media blogs and, you know, she's read starting strength. She's been to a starting strength seminar. So she has a, an appetite for, learning about the body, learning about the technical aspects of what we do. She's a student of the bar. And I think that 
when you get into the when you get into the the realm of health and fitness that deeply, then it's more than just um, going and working out. It's exactly. something that really you enjoy learning about. She enjoys, she'll ask me a question. Hey, what do you think about this? What do you think about that? And we'll talk about the technical and the scientific basis. So what we've tried to do, what I try to do with all trainees or people that I work with or that are in our, our community is bring to light ideas that are number one, like we talk about scientific based, number two, experiential or anecdotal based. And then number three, they're supported by content experts or the greater community. Right. How can we learn more from each other and how can other female or male athletes learn from Jojo's experience or maybe my experience or your experience and the things that we've gone through to say that's junk science. That doesn't work. Right. She came to me fairly quickly after and said, what do you think about stem cell injections in my knee? I said, well, let's, you know, how much cartilage do you have in your knee? Well, none. Um, you can you, stem cells don't work when there's no bed of, of biological tissue to help to revive. <laughs> right. Right. It, they just, it doesn't work. Um, and so th- those are getting that information not only can put you on a path to make better decisions and empower yourself, but it can also save you thousands of dollars potentially of doing the wrong thing just because it's the new thing. And uh, we want to do things that are scientifically based. So Jojo, all right, I got a question for you. What do you say to women who say, I don't want to lift weights because I'm going to get all bulky and muscular and get huge? As you sit there with your bulky muscles. Yeah, I'm sorry. Well, traps, traps. No. traps are just popping traps. out over here. Oh, yeah, stop. Is that bulky? No, no it's not stop. bulky. No. Okay, okay. No. Well, I would just say if if they would only be so lucky because I, I know <laughs> so s- several women that work very, very, very hard to get a bulky look and have large muscles and it's not easy. So yeah. it wouldn't happen. I would say, give it a try for yeah. three months, six months, see what happens. It's not going to happen. You're not going to get bulky. Yeah. What do you see some of the benefits of just of a fit, a fit lifestyle, a healthy lifestyle of, of having a regular training program? Cause you train, I mean, I program four days a week for you and then every now and then you'll do something also in between there. But what do you, what do you say, to people, what are the benefits of training that you notice just overall? Well, my strength will, is I like having, knowing that my strength is good and I can move and feel good Mm -hmm. and lift things. I have people that will go, Hey, help me. My neighbor, she's like, will call me and say, use your fitness because, or use your strength. I need this table moved. Mm -hmm. That that happens all the time. And, uh, just, I feel good. I am tired at night when I go home and yeah. go to bed and I sleep great. Good sleep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 And look wise. Yeah. Um, I, I like it. I have, my boys are funny. They, uh, know that mom looks strong and even I'll work out in the garage or do stuff. And I have my old equipment and a pull-up bar and I got rings and I got stuff. And I know that they like seeing the example, but they're athletes in their own right, but they know that their mom is fit and their mom tries to stay healthy and fit and, you know, feel good. Not I'm, I'm, I'm unlike a lot of the moms they see. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you're definitely a great fit example for, for your boys and for women in general. So a woman comes to you and she's out of shape. Um, she's got more body fat than she wants. Um, what would you tell her? What would you, what, what's the advice that you would give to an over 40 female who just feels like this is too big of a mountain to even start climbing? I mean, it's just, it's just too big of a, I just simply, as I've done it with a number of people, get them under a barbell. That's there's no, the, the more muscle you gain, the less the more uh, calories you'll burn, the better you'll feel. They'll feel stronger. They'll feel empowered. I think with the barbell and doing something that's not, uh, that's out of, their comfort zone in a sense and doing something that maybe is typically a man thing. All of a sudden, say, all right. sudden you can do this and you're like, manly. Hey, you know what? No, it's not manly at all. No, no. But learning something is a great thing to do as well. Yes. So you learn you're gaining muscle. And I I've had friends come in that don't would never walk into a CrossFit gym, but I can get him into a strength gym or to meet me at my house or yeah. somewhere and train on a barbell and and they're okay with that. Yeah. Yeah, I think you you made a really good point. The bar and a lot of training environments 
have kind of normally barbell training's kind of normally been been associated with more of a, a masculine kind of thing. You know, getting into the bar and just grinding out a squat, yeah, or a deadlift or something like that, or pressing. It, it's like bench be- press, beards, death metal, yes. and tattoos. Yes, that's what and guys do. You know, whiskey. <laughs> and so you know, but but I I think you made a a perfect point when when a woman gets under a bar and she starts to realize that it is very feminine to be strong. It is very feminine. It's, 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 it can be part of the feminine culture to be a strong woman. Being a weak woman is not feminine. Weakness is not a gender specific trait. Weakness is pure and simple weakness, right? Being feminine and being strong, they, they can coexist. And I love it when I see a woman get into the bar and she gets into that bar and that bar rests on a nice set of traps, right? You right. know, or she's wearing a tank or something, or her sports bra strap comes across her shoulders, and it's not this valley; it's this mountain, right? right. Of traps, you know. And well, she has now a don't very scare people away. Muscular. Don't scare no, them. I don't think it's, like, okay, so no. tell me what you told me that a woman said to you in Mexico <laughs> when you're in Mexico, and she oh, looked okay. at your back. No, and, she and said, said, no. So yes, yeah, yeah. she said what do you do for your back? Right. And I I want that back. I, I want to have that definition. I mean, that's not but back. Oh, oh, back. back. Oh, oh, sorry. Come on, Darren. <laughs> Bring your eyes sorry. up. No, sorry, baby, got no. back. <laughs> so she said, I, I want to look like that. And she's in her early 50s. And she knew how, found out how old I was. Yep. And I said, she said, what is it? And I said, well, barbell training. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Getting yeah. strong. Yep. Cool. Absolutely. Yeah, I love, um, you know, uh, one of our colleagues up in uh, Woodmere, New York. I think it's kind of Long Island area. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Ina WFC. Koppel. Yeah, so, she's amazing. So she has a, uh, a gym up there, Woodmere Fitness Club, and uh, she has classes of entirely women because um, a lot of them are, are Orthodox. Jewish community. Uh, Orthodox yep. Jewish. And so they, they, they only work out with other other ladies. And um, I mean, it's fantastic. She's got moms, you've got babies in the background, you know, they're sitting there with the baby in between squat sets. And yeah, uh, yeah I mean, it's, it, it just goes to show strength is a, a human thing, not, right. a, not a man thing, not a woman thing. If I, I've heard it enough and enough uh, being in the strength community for the last few years that strength is the foundation. And if I, if I had someone come to me and say, well, I've been losing some weight and I, I want to tone up and I want to, you know, they may think, okay, well, I've been running and I'm like, great, but that's not going to get you stronger. And right. if you want to change your body, you're going to do it better with strength training. Right. It's, and we, we are what we are and we have what we have, but if you really want to maximize it, you need to get stronger. And I've been more and more convinced yeah. that. Well, and, and I think, I think a youthful body, as we get older and we get in our forties and fifties and, um, you know, what, what I've talked with other female and male clients that are, that are in our age group, and that is that a body that's more muscular and that actually has a little bit more fat, and, and I don't mean unhealthy levels, but I mean just, you know, a healthy level of fat, body fat percentage, and a more muscular body, it looks more youthful. It definitely looks more youthful. And so, and the only but thing. Than a bag of bones. Than a bag of bones, yeah. I say it all the time to our Skinny ladies. a bag of bones. I, I, I say it to our ladies all the time. I've said it on this podcast. A guy would much rather snuggle up to a curvy girl with, with some muscle and a little bit more body fat than a bag of bones. Yep. And, you know, it's just, it's just, I think it's just. It's more associated with a youthful body is right. having a healthy muscle tone and some muscles and a little bit of healthy body fat. So, um, and it's a sign of, of, of good body habitus and good body health. Right. And I think we carry right. ourselves differently and, um, we can age gracefully. And I think that's what we're all about as we get older is aging gracefully. And of course, looking good naked. Yeah. That's really all it comes down to. Looking, looking good naked. naked. Yeah. yeah. We're all, we're I'd all just, just be primal. happy to look good in clothes. I, I mean, just like really good in shorts and that's, a t-shirt. Yeah, that's kind I, of my goal. Know, but if you're Corey, that... then you just wear a Speedo. Yeah. Like we talked right. about a bikini. Yeah. yeah, a bikini. Yeah, yeah. we talked about so, that. Earlier. So I searched long and long and hard to find, because um, I didn't want a Speedo. 
but I wanted the swimsuit that Daniel Craig comes out of the ocean with. That is a she a knows. Great Joe goes, look. Yeah. Daniel Craig. Ooh. I'm telling you, man. I, 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 I have know. a man I'm crush sorry. on that guy. Yeah. What? What? Tell me what scene was it? Uh, was he right, in the? So was it like the casino off royale? White one? Uh, no, this is the blue one. Blue one. Blue one. So he's a casino royale. He's also he's, wearing an Omega like, watch. Yeah, he's he's, he's swimming, and uh, you know he walks out of the ocean, and like you know. He's well, you know, this, he's like 5'2", like by the way. No, yeah. he's right. not. He's really short. Yeah. He's, he was really short. So what's but wrong all, with the short? I, I know, but this guy's got this perfect, just ma- muscular, masculine yeah, it's just like body. And he looks perfect in like that little, right. whatever that little, yeah, it's, it's like a, a Speedo. It's like a squared off Speedo. No, I got too yeah, much yeah, weight. Yeah. And I, I, know I, it, and I, I found one, yeah. finally. I found one. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Not the same swimsuit, but pretty dang close. And um, I don't want to see you in it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. And where are you swimming? <laughs> and uh, yeah, you, my, you, my goal is you to swim in your bathtub. Is that... So your goal is to look. Uh, yeah. So, so the goal is Daniel Craig. <laughs> the goal is Daniel Craig. <laughs> Daniel Craig looks awesome, man. Yeah. If I could, if I could walk out of the water and look like Daniel, Daniel Craig without hair. I right. think I need to look at that scene again. Yeah, I think no, I need yeah. to watch okay, it. So, okay, so I I, I okay, so okay, so I'm going to go scene. away from Daniel Craig here. Yeah, if I could walk out of the water and look like Jason Statham, I would be good. Mm, Jason Statham, yeah. he's a stud. So I'm going to stick with he's Daniel Craig because Daniel Craig has hair. Uh, and, okay, uh, that's why I chose <laughs> Jason Statham. That's why I, I had chose to, Jason I had to, Statham. You left yourself wide open. But I had to make a hair. I have a pair like you're talking about. I yeah. have a pair of Speedo swim trucks. Yeah, they're they're not speedo, they're Nike, but they're a little short, right? Like, like a, short like a boy trucks. short. Yeah, they're like yeah. a boy kind short, of. but they're for men. Yeah. Okay, these are men's shorts, yeah. not boy shorts. Okay. Which, by the way, okay. that's kind of like a rain, ranger panties, and they yes. call them, yeah, yes. yeah. ranger. Which they're called panties. Yeah, that's for, yeah, for the well, armies. did you hear that the granny panties are coming back now for women? Yeah, because yeah. it holds all the stuff in. That no, they are, no, that they Kim Kardashian at a the, photo. She was like, I was like, yes, the no, full cuts. granny. The no, full it cut. is. They're coming back. So, like I was saying, <laughs> yeah, um, I've got a pair of those shorts, and I do have a picture of me in those shorts. But I really don't look like Daniel Craig. I look yeah. more like, I don't know, like um, Jim Belushi in him. Wow. Mm. Yeah, it's not quite like Daniel Craig. At least it's not Chris Farley. No. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. But, but uh, let, let, all right, so the, the point of all this is that uh, good naked. If, uh, if you're wearing board shorts right now, um, stop. Yes. Go buy a pair of <laughs> square cut Speedos <laughs> if you can't handle the full... Thing. Yeah, the full thing. And rejoice because because all of our, our <laughs> listeners here, all of our listeners are squatting um, and they got big old thighs, which is great, big muscular thighs. And you know what? You will bask in the glory of the freedom that comes with not having all the yeah. thigh You said rub. freedom too open. <laughs> yeah. A little too yeah. comfortable. <laughs> okay. And we don't right. want to talk about freedom. Well, well, Jojo, um, back to the subject at hand. Uh, do you have anything that you'd want to say to people who are just discovering our podcast and are interested in starting women to get fit? Women specifically. Yeah. What but would men you, too. What would you say to them? I would say grab a book, start reading, reach out to go to startingstrength.com, right? And then you can find coaches, you can find videos, get started, just Find a gym yeah. as, as soon yeah. as you can, or at least an online coach. And there's a barbell and a rack somewhere where you near where you live. I yeah, promise. even in Hawaii. Yeah, there is. There is a place. And then if not, they there's a place called Craigslist. And you yeah. can Build do, a garage start, gym. start. Yeah, it may not be a fancy, but you right. can start even if it's just with a barbell and some a few weights. Yeah. But do it. Yeah. yeah Fantastic. I, I think, you know. We've talked about this and I wanted to say this, I I wasn't necessarily going to use this podcast to do it, but I think it's a good place to do it. And to say this, basically fitness is bigger than any one discipline or modality of training. Your fitness is, we've talked about this trend a little offline, right? And that is our fitness is bigger than starting strength. Our fitness is bigger than CrossFit. Our fitness is bigger than you like endurance sports, swimming, running, cycling, um, good general all around fitness is built on a good general all around fitness program. And, but like Jojo said earlier, and like she's talking about right now, the foundation of all your fitness is first built on strength 
out of the 10 general physical skills, strength is the bedrock. It is the keystone that holds the whole bridge of fitness together. It, it locks everything together. And we found that the best way to build general strength safely in a trainee or in a client or in ourselves is the barbell training model. And that is the model that we use as starting strength. As you develop, like we talked about in our last podcast on endurance, as you develop as a lifter, as a trainee, and you get a reasonable strength foundation, then we can start to look at these other disciplines and modalities as ways to widen your fitness. And I think what that's what you've done. And that's mm-hmm. kind of what you're experiencing right now. And what you're going to have, what you're starting to, you know, you're a crossfitter and then you're a lifter and now you're kind of, we're trying to marry some things together so that you can have a, a really good balance, um, approach. Um, I'd love to see her do a lifting meet again, but we'll just have to see how the knee holds up and do that again. Absolutely. Hopefully someday. So, yes. all right, well, I'm good. Yeah. Jojo, thanks for being on the show. Thank you for having me. Can we follow you anywhere on the social media, the social meds? She has an Instagram account. I have an Instagram account. Okay. Yeah. Where can we find you on Instagram? At Strong Boy Mama. Strong Boy Mama. Okay. At Strong Boy Mama. So it's, and and, and then I'm on Facebook. All right. Fantastic. So I'm not on Snapchat like my kids. I probably should be. Is that what Snapchat? Snapchat. Snapchat. Yeah, I don't know what that's. No, you don't know. That's what that's scary. Oh, and I am on Twitter too. Tinder. (laughs) <laughs> you tender? Oh, You're on Twitter. Tender. Oh, sorry. She's married. Uh, guys. She's married. Guys. I'm ba- happily married. What's yeah, Tinder? <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. I know. Right. I'm laughing because I know people that have met and been married on <laughs> Tinder. So, well, fantastic. Well, go follow uh, JoJo at Strong Boy Mama on Instagram. Go follow us at Forty Fit Radio on Instagram. You can also find us at Forty Fit Masters Community on Facebook. As always, if you got any questions for us, if you got any questions for JoJo. Uh, hit us up at info at 40fit.com. We'll answer them or we'll send them along to JoJo for her to answer. Also, if you are a woman and you are looking for a good barbell coach in the North Richland Hills, Keller, Colleyville, Roanoke, just Northeast Tarrant County area, reach out to JoJo. She has a little uh, gym in her garage. She also can use our gym here at Fort Worth Strength and Conditioning. And um, she's, she, she knows the starting strength method. She's not a starting strength coach yet, but she knows the method. She follows the method, and she would be a great person as a general resource. Absolutely. And she can communicate and work with us as need be. So, yeah, she's fantastic. Yeah, just reach yeah. out to her, too. Thank so. you. All right, guys. Well, we will see you next week. Thanks again for joining the 40 Fit Nation.